All right, so here I've got plant with runners, right? So I just, just grab the runner, follow it back to the plant. I like to hold one hand on the plant, and this is all if you've got really loose soil. If I just pull on the runner, I'm afraid I'll pull the whole plant right out, so. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com, and uh, today I'm out here pruning the, some of the runners off of my um, strawberry plants. So these are new strawberries. They uh, were planted in the spring. They're a uh, June-bearing variety, and it's their first year. And they're sending out these runners, right? This is the plant's way of, of, of propagating itself, right? They put these things out. All along the runner, you have these, these things here. This is a new strawberry plant, okay? And if I just leave that, this thing will send roots out. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Literally send the roots out and root itself and make a new plant. Okay. And you can do that. Um, but the parent plant that the runner came from, it's got about, let's say, I mean, there's different estimates of this, but about two years. Two, three years of really good productivity. Um, and the runners draw away from that. So if I want to get the most out of these plants, and I, I've got pruners here, but really I find it easier to do with your, your bare hands. You find the runner and then you just follow it back to the plant and just nip it off sort of thing, right? I'll show these in a close up in a minute. If you pull too hard, the plant might come out. If you get, get loose soil like mine, if you pull too hard on the runner, you could remove the plant. Um, so, your parent plant, for the next three years, I planted them this, this spring, for the next three years they'll be very productive, and then after those three years the production will start to decrease. Each plant will produce less fruit, less fruit per season. You know, next year, I mean, they, they basically gave me no fruit this year, they just put on vegetative growth and developed their root systems. I'll cover these over and they'll, they'll come up next spring, next June, I'll get good production out of these. The following year I'll get even better production. The year after that will be about the same, then it'll start to peter off, right? And that's when you want to either use the runners to propagate new plants or, you know, buy another set of um, plants and stick them in. Maybe you want to try a different variety or whatever. You know, an entire, you know, you can do for about $20 worth of, um, you know, you get the, the, the plants as runners from a seed provider. Uh, for about twenty dollars of investment, you can get about three three years worth of maybe even four if you're depends on the conditions. Three four years of really good production of strawberries, and you, for about twenty dollars worth of, of plants, you can get I would say two four by eight beds easily. Two four by eight beds out of that. Um, so that's pretty good value, even if you know you're not letting the runners propagate. But yeah, if you want to optimize that bed, if you want to get the most out of it, you gotta snap the runners off. So let's bring the camera in a little closer and <clears throat> show you what I'm doing here. All right, so here I've got plant with runners, right? So I just, just grab the runner, follow it back to the plant. I like to hold one hand on the plant. And this is all if you've got really loose soil. If I just pull on the runner, I'm afraid I'll pull the whole plant right out. So just, you know, you hold it between your thumb and forefinger and just snap it off like that. You could get in there with scissors or something like that, but I find it's, it's, it's quicker and more effective just to nip them off like that. So, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, I've done a couple of videos today on this general theme. The plant's trying to do what it wants to do, and sometimes it's good to let the plants do what they want to do, but sometimes it isn't, <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> you know, we, uh, the plants want to make babies, and I'm like, no, I don't want you making babies right now. I want you to just get bigger and stronger and, you know, do that later, <laughs> right? You're, you're, you know, I want the plant to put its energy into, um, you know, getting, a, developing itself so that it'll be a really good fruit producer, right? It's like any living thing. It's trying to be a, a strawberry producer and... I mean, it's got two ways to, to reproduce itself. It can put out runners and make new plants, or it can make uh, the fruit, which is the seed. So by removing these runners, I'm telling it what I want it to do. Right? I'm insisting um, that I do not want uh, it to put out runners. I want it to make fruit next year. 
I mean, it doesn't take long. Some people think strawberries are, are a lot of work, but they're really not. I mean, this, you keep the, the soil heavily mulched so you don't water them, you don't really weed them. And uh, the only thing you have to do, if you, and this is only if you're, you could just leave them to put out the runners, they'll still give you fruit. But this is just a way to get the best out of them, the most possible out of them, right? Optimizing your yield, right? So next year these plants will be really productive. So I mean, look at all the, that's a relatively short amount of time. But look at all the runners we took out of there, right? <laughs> now, if you have a friend, you could give these to them. If they, if, you know, all of these have started to put on a little bit of growth. If you were to get these in the ground right away, um, let's say there's a 50-50 chance they'd survive being snapped off the plant. They do a lot better when they're rooting and they're still connected to the mother, right? Of course, right? But um, even like this, just loose and free and detached from the parent plant, um, I found you can stick them in the ground and they'll grow. And this would be the time of year to do that if you were gonna propagate, right? So if I had a friend or I had another bed where I wanted to have even more strawberries, I could plant these, I could do that. I'm not gonna bother, I got all the strawberry plants I need this year. But uh, this is a good way to, you know, make your friends happy, share your strawberry runners with them. Here's another strawberry bed with a good number of runners in them. So uh, this bed's got a few more weeds because I didn't mulch it as well as the other one. And uh, I guess I should mention, someone, some people might say, well, my strawberries didn't have any runners. And I, I would say the, the amount of runners that the strawberry plant puts out is almost directly proportional to the amount of sun and uh, the quality of the soil, right? So if the plant, uh, you know, what, you, what you're seeing is the runners are the plants basically showing you how vigorous and how healthy and how happy they are. Or if they're putting out a lot of runners, it means they've gathered a lot of energy and nutrients that growing year. So it's a happy, productive, successful plant, right? So the runners are a good sign that everything's going right, right? It's procreating. <laughs> That's good, right? Healthy populations procreate. Unhealthy populations, um, well, they don't, right? They just, they just gradually uh, wither out. So this, boy, this, this one plant must have had like, 10 runners, right? So it's a really healthy plant. And you can see they're, they're starting to put the roots out, uh, different stages of, of root development of these runners, right? This one here has got like a little, just a little uh, nubbin, right? And here's another one. It's actually started to send roots out, right? This whole thing here can be a whole new plant if you want to plant it somewhere. Now I've done videos on that in the past. Now here I got a nice weed, a dill growing in the garden. So I mean, while I'm doing this, I'm doing my, my weeding. These are all things that don't take long to do once you get the hang of it and you're, you kind of uh, go by feel. But the runners at this stage of the plant's development are really not doing much good. And don't leave them in the garden, because <laughs> some of them will just grow anyway, <laughs> right? I mean, some of them will die if you just lay them on the ground, but some of them will, will root. <laughs> They're really good. The roots are extremely good at finding the soil on their own, right? So it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's one more little chore, one more little thing to do. But uh, it's just, uh, it's good practice, good diligence in your garden. There's another weed, right? You're weeding while you're, while you're going. There's a runner that produced, produced a plant in a, in a spot where there's not a lot growing, so I don't mind so much. This is a, this is a weed. Take that out. A weed covered with flowers. Another weed there. There we go. I'm just removing all the runners. All right, and then when I uh, have a nice day, I'll come out here and mulch this really well. I'm actually going to leave that one in. And sometimes I'll choose to leave runners in. That's, that's fine. You can do that. Right? If you get a spot in your, in your garden where there's like a, you know, a blank spot, <laughs> nothing growing, um, why not leave the runner in place? Right? If, it's, if, if the runner is helping to, you know, it's, <laughs> if the runner is helping your garden be the garden you want it to be, let it express itself. Right? But if the runner is just, just, you know, 
uh, I'm not expressing myself very well here. Let me show you. So I got a spot in my garden here, right? Where I don't know why, but you know, we didn't have a lot of plants, not a lot going on here. And so this, this plant and this plant are from a runner from a different plant. So, you know, I'm going to let, let them express themselves. All right, this one here, I've pulled it out, but it'll grow. It'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to let, I'm going to let that happen. All right, because it's, there's, <laughs> I have the space. It's a good space to have a, a plant, right? So I don't mind, I don't know why, but whatever plant I had there must have failed or who knows why. Sometimes, who cares, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. In this case, the, the strawberry is doing what I want it to do, so I let the runner express itself. But, you know, for, for every one that's like that, I'm going to be removing like 10. So very often I like to do these videos where I sort of speed things up and show how little time it takes to do stuff. So I'm going to do that here because I think that's one of the big, biggest complaints I hear when I talk to people in my, my office where I work. They'll say, oh, I don't have time to garden. Um, so I thought I would just... Now I'll speed the camera up, but we'll, we'll figure out how long it took, and I'll just mention that, put a little note in the video. But how long it takes, i got a stretch of garden here, it's about 3 feet wide by about 12 feet long. Let's see how long it takes to weed and de-runner this space. That's sorted. <laughs> Didn't take too long. You know, a little bit of exercise. I got basically uh, worked up a sweat now, and uh, uh, it's time to go inside and take a shower and get lunch ready and all that sort of stuff. But uh, now I need to put a mulch here because the, the the original mulch here was grass clippings, and it's pretty much less than an inch thick now. So the mulch is broken down, and uh, I need something that there's areas here where the soil is just it's exposed, so I need to replenish the mulch. Um, but other than that, my work is done here, right? Um, oh, oh, I just missed one more runner over here. Yeah, it's a great exercise. But the other good thing about this is that it just it just connects you to the plant and makes you aware of what's happening in your garden, so that you you don't let the weeds get too out of control. It's just one more thing, and anything that increases your your attentiveness, your connection to what's going on in your garden is, is always good practice, right? Um, so yeah, all I gotta do is put down a mulch. Uh, around October, November, I'll add uh, maybe an inch more of straw or hay over top of the actual plants to sort of just cover them for the winter. Not too much, but just some, right? Um, and then um, in the spring, April, May, they'll just poke, they'll find their way up through that no problem. 
and I anticipate a really good yield uh, next June, probably late, usually here it's around late June. But anyway, that's, that's what you gotta do, controlling your runners for your, your June bearing plants or any, any strawberry for that matter. Um, in their first couple of years, you know, if you wanna get the most out of your plants, uh, snap all those runners off. I know it's, it's counterintuitive, you know, basically every one of these runners is two or three new tomato plants. It's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to re remove tomato plants to get more tomatoes, but that's how it works. These plants, big, strong, fat, healthy tomato plants. They're gonna be bigger and stronger and fatter next year, and they gotta give me big, fat, delicious strawberries. So, uh, hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGarden.com, and until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.